The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are hungry now, who are, who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. In 1997, Fred Rogers received an Emmy. Appropriately so. He's amazing. Did some more wonderful, wonderful television over his lifetime. And at his acceptance speech, he stood in front of a crowd of people, all the Hollywood elites, the actors, the producers, the people that work behind the scenes, and he invited them to do something. He says, all of us have special loved ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take along with me 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are, those who cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life? And it was pretty amazing to watch, and you can see this on YouTube, to watch these Hollywood people just humble themselves in that moment to think about those people. Let's do that ourselves. Let's stop for just 10 seconds and think about the people who have blessed you, who have cared for you, who have made you into who you are. He followed it up saying, whomever you have been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they made. How pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they made. Blessed are these saints. It's All Saints Day. We're going to be talking about the saints. And I kind of put the saints into three categories. I don't know if this is theologically correct, but they're my categories. So these are my three categories. You have the saints of old, the Old Testament, New Testament saints, the people that we lift up. Uh, the saints that were the 2,000 years after Jesus that lived and moved and did all kinds of wonderful things, and we remember them, and we commemorate them, and we honor them, and, and all the wonderful things that they did, and they inspire us still by their holy witness. And then the second category are the saints of our lives, those people that we've lost in our lifetime, those people that have touched us, that have shaped us by their lives, um, that continue to still do so, that we knew firsthand. For me and myself, I think of my mom and my dad. And then the third category of saints is us, each and every one of us. Go ahead and look around the room. Right now, you're surrounded by saints. We are still frantically trying to bear witness to God's way and will in the world. Now, the one thing that we all have in common, not only are we saints, but we are also all sinners. sinners. Very good. Some of y'all were scared to say that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had a question mark? <laughs> yeah. It's easy to see us as sinners, right? I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I can look in the mirror and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm broken. I, I do bad things. I say things. I think things that aren't healthy. Uh, I'm a sinner. I need, I need help. I need repentance. Um, I do confession and forgiveness. You know, it's easy to see the brokenness in me. But when we start thinking about our loved ones that have, we've lost along the way, we don't necessarily think about their sins, do we? I mean, we see them much more as saints, Right? We don't recall all the bad things or the mistakes that they made. We remember the good stuff, which is good that we do so because funerals would be terrible if we did it the other way. And then we start thinking about the saints of old, and we hardly ever remember their brokenness, but we think about their powerful witness, how they stood up and stood through the test of time, and we still venerate them today. Well, today we're remembering all of the saints, the generations past, those that we've lost in our lifetime, and each and every one of us that are gathered here today. 
and that we are also all sinners. And what a better lesson for us to have about saints and sinners is the blessings and the woes that Jesus gives to the disciples as he preaches to them in the Gospel of Luke. Go ahead and take out your Bibles. And I want you to turn to Luke 6. It's on page 838. Take out a Bible. Turn to page 838 for Luke 6. And for those that are at home, it's Luke 6, and it starts at verse 20. But we're going to go back a little bit. Because Jesus didn't all of a sudden just turn to the disciples as they were walking around and say, Hey, you know what, fellas? Blessed are you who are poor. It didn't happen like that. Something was going on beforehand. And if you look at verses 17 through 19, you're going to see that they were going along on a level place, the plain. And that's important because that means that Jesus was eye to eye with them. He was not in some lofty position. He was not on a boat offshore. He was with the people, eye to eye, equal with them. And there were people that were coming. There were disciples that were there and a great multitude of people from all over were coming to see Jesus. And why were they coming? To be healed, to touch him, to take care of their diseases, their problems, their unclean spirits, and to be cured. And in verse 19, it says, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all. For power came out from him and healed all. It didn't say that he was making sure that they weren't sinners beforehand or that they were Jewish beforehand or that they had, you know, a good pedigree or anything. He healed them all. If they touched him, they were being healed. And that's when he looks at the disciples. And remember, a disciple is a learner of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, somebody that's going to try to do what Jesus is doing. And what is he doing right there? Absolutely serving people the best way he knows how with God's power to heal them. And he looks at these disciples and he says, blessed. Now, that's also an interesting word. We use it all the time, don't we? If you're going to say a prayer over the meal, we always ask, who's going to say the? There you go. When somebody sneezes, we say? Very good, very good. And we also use it kind of in a not so good way, especially when somebody does something we don't like and we go, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> But here, the word blessed means favored by God. Favored by God. Read those blessings with that instead. Those that are favored by God are poor. Those disciples have nothing. They've shared everything that they have. And now they are experiencing the kingdom of God in their midst. Just look at what Jesus is doing right in front of them. The Spirit is moving in and through Jesus, and it's God that is doing that work through this man that they're on an eye level with. Favored by God are those that are hungry now, not just for food, but for justice and mercy and righteousness and healing. You will be filled with more than enough. Just look at what Jesus is doing. There's enough for everyone. Favored by God are those who weep, so touched by the needs and the pains of those around them that they will meet them in their darkness and be a light for them, and walk with them into new life. That's where you will find true joy. Just look at what Jesus is doing in their very presence. Favored by God are the ones who are despised and excluded and reviled for the sake of the Son of Man. It says, rejoice and leap for joy. That phrase, leap for joy, comes from the Old Testament. And it means that a prophecy has been fulfilled. Leap for joy. In other words, you're doing the will of God. Leap for joy. You're just like the prophets of old. Leap for joy. And then Jesus says the reverse, going back to the woes. Woe to you who are rich. That's what you want. That's what you have. There's your consolation. There's your reward. Those who are full, they're always going to hunger for more, and they always do. We know that feeling. Those that are laughing now, they have yet to acknowledge that they're in pain and mourning. It's going to come. If you don't deal with it, it'll deal with you. Be careful not to let it go to your head when people are talking big about you or bragging about you or putting your face on a billboard or a lunchbox. And then he draws them near. And he looks at them and says, listen closely. Love your enemies. At the time, these disciples had enemies. It was the Roman government. They were being oppressed by them. Even the people that were reading this for the first time had these same enemies. They were having to worship and, and get together and be Christians in, in secret. And Jesus is telling them all, love your enemies. 
Do good to those who don't do good to you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for them. If someone strikes you, don't strike back. If they take your coat, give them your shirt. If they take your stuff, don't ask for it back. And then he gives that golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think we've used that an awful lot. But man, we've taken it out of context, haven't we? Whatever you want people to do for you, do that same thing for them. This is saintly stuff right here that Jesus is telling the disciples to do. This is doing the will of God. This is letting God work in and, in and through you. And Jesus has given them a wonderful example of how this happens. And this is amazingly difficult for us to do. Could you imagine being a disciple at this time and having to pray for your abuser to bless those enemies? A few minutes ago, we were thinking about the people that made you, that blessed you, that honored you, that made you who you are for those 10 seconds. It's easy to be saintly for those people, right? But what about the opposite? What about those people that don't bless us? People that are hard to live with. It happens to every single one of us. I had a gentleman in my life that I had the hardest time with. We never got along. The word hate was used quite a bit. We would argue left and right. We never saw eye to eye. It got to the point where I would just have a visceral reaction and get nauseous if I was in his presence. And I went and talked to my spiritual advisor who says, you need to pray for this man. I said, I can't. I can't pray for him. It's evil. I don't like him. I don't like what he's doing. Well, then ask God to bless him because clearly you can't. And that made sense. And so I started to pray every single day to bless that man more than you have blessed me. Bless that man more than you have blessed me. And days went by, and all of a sudden I was able to look at this man and not turn away. I was able to talk with this man and finish a sentence. I was able to be in this man's presence and the nausea was starting to dissipate and go away. It got so that all of a sudden I was seeing this man as somebody that's broken too, that had a really hard past, that was dealing with an awful lot in their life and was broken just like me and actually had saintly moments. I go back and tell my spiritual advisor about this and he says, exactly, God blesses them but changes you. God bless them. Change me. I invite you to stand on the shoulders of those saints that have gone before us. The generations ago, the saints of our lives, and even the saints in this room. And for the next 10 seconds, I want you to think about those people that it's hard to bless, that it's hard to pray for. Maybe it's that person that you say, I will never forgive them. <laughs> Just for 10 seconds, think about those names. Whomever it is, let God do the work. May God bless them and change me. Amen.